Hi, Dr. Pulsifer here to talk about why we playtest at the highest level what makes games different from other works of art. Think about this. In any individual art where someone or occasionally a group of people creates a work, they could decide to test it with an audience for acceptance to see what the audience thought. But most such works, music, sculpture, paintings, plays, novels, and so forth, are not. Well, this may be partly tradition, but in some cases it's because it's too difficult to change the work. For example, sculptures are hard to change. Mainly, though, it's because these are not activities. These are passive, whereas games are activities, and that makes a tremendous amount of difference. Now, to continue this a little more, until recently, films were almost never tested by groups before release, but now it's become relatively easy to alter a completed film, especially with digital editing, and testing is now common. The filmmakers will make films with several endings, or they'll try different things in other parts of the film, and then they'll test it with audiences to see what the audience likes or what they don't like. I think it's also common now for novelists to ask a small group of people to read their books. Of course, in the case of novels, editors have often modified them before publication ever since novels were invented. So again, why the difference? There's two things. Active versus passive art and how easy is it to alter the work. Well, non-games are passive. I'm not thoroughly satisfied with that word, but it's the best one I can think of. And by this I mean there's no changes intended or possible in the work. It's just one way. Uh, the consumers actually cannot be completely passive because they have to be of an active mind to fully understand the work, but many consumers are in fact passive and don't think much when they're watching plays or watching movies or reading novels and so forth. In particular, these things are not changed by the consumer, although there are now some modern works that are intended to change with input from the consumer. In other words, where the consumer or the user participates. But this is a relatively recent development. Now contrast this with games. Games are active. They're intended to change as the player experiences them. You know, a game that always went the same way would not be popular at all. People expect games to go differently each time they play. Now that's less true of puzzles and puzzle games than it is of other kinds of games. In general, as the player plays, the game changes. And that, in a nutshell, is why we have to play test games. We have to try to cover all the possibilities of change that don't exist with most works of art of other kinds. In a sense, the author of a game, in other words the designer, has much less control over his work than a painter or a writer or a playwright or a sculptor. So the designer, the creators of the game, play test the game to try to gain a form of control over how it is used by the players, that form being to make sure that the constraints that they've established in the game do work and don't result in dynamics that are undesirable. Now, Video games offer more control by nature than tabletop games do because in a video game the software enforces the rules, whereas in a tabletop game the players have to enforce the rules. The software prevents players from playing in a way not desired by the designer. But that's only if the game has been tested enough for unintended consequences to be discovered and dealt with. And we have all heard of video games where unintended consequences led to perfect strategies or the invention of entirely th new things like rocket jumping. That was not designed by the designer. As I understand it, it just happened. People figured out how to do that. So we're testing to look for emergent results that are undesirable so that we can find ways to remove them from the game. Now the other contrast between games and other works of art is that 
The other works of art are hard to change. They tend to be set in stone. For whatever reason, it doesn't change once it's released. We can find exceptions, like Anton Bruckner in the late 19th century often revised his symphonies, but that's an exception. In some cases, change is just too difficult, as in most sculpture and paintings. In others, it seems there's a tradition of the primacy of the individual artist, and that leads to an absence of change after release. But games are fairly easy to change. Tabletop games are quite easy to change. Video games can be changed drastically during development, although it costs more in, t in time and effort. Also, we now have many video games that are released only partly completed so that they can be modified and expanded afterward. Some MMOs and other online games are intended to be changed over time in the light of play. There's no pretense that they won't change. I would say that naturally if artists had relatively easy ways to change their works then some would test the works before release. Certainly where work can be altered by the user the artist is more likely to test the work. And in games, we know from experience, without testing, you're all too likely to get a dud. You'll have things wrong that will mess the game up. Now, playtesting is different from revision. Isaac Asimov was a famous author. He wrote over 300 books, some fiction, most of them were fact, but his most well-known works were the science fiction Foundation series. On a dare, he once wrote a short story and sold it without revision. But he was Isaac Asimov. He wasn't just any old writer. And so anybody publishing a book or a magazine would be very happy to buy an Isaac Asimov story, even if it wasn't very good, because it was Isaac Asimov. Now, revision is changing things based on your own experience. It's what you do when you're solo testing a game that you've created. Playtesting is getting other people's experience, collecting that experience. And I don't play in playtest games because I want other people's experience, not my experience. And then you use that experience to revise your work. So revision comes from your own experience. Playtesting enables you to modify on the basis of other people's experience. Now, you can try to be like a typical artist and make a game without reference to others' experience, but that's a big, big, big mistake. Thanks for listening.